and you're watching your weather today. We are watching Alex. Now a tropical storm. It's been downgraded as of the latest advisory at the National Hurricane Center. Winds are now down to 70 miles per hour. I'm Mike Bennett in Brownsville, Texas. We'll bring you the latest here from South Texas. Also out on the Barrier Islands where Stephanie is in South Padre. Yeah, it might be down to a tropical storm, but that doesn't mean we are through with Alex. Find out the threats that this tropical storm will pose later today. And welcome back, everyone, to Your Weather Today. The Weather Channel is the Hurricane Authority, and we've been following Alex for the past several days. Good news to pass along. It is slowly now weakening as it makes landfall through uh, Mexico. Winds are now down to 70 miles per hour. Pressure is rising, and that means that the storm is certainly weakening. We're following for you here from Brownsville, also following for you from uh, South Padre Island. Let's bring you the latest right now on Alex. In terms of pressure, Alex was a very strong Category 2 storm. It actually, uh, since since Hurricane Audrey, the highest, the lowest pressure, I should say, that was in 1957. That storm was a Category 4. At least 17 people dead, unfortunately, in Mexico and in Central America due to some flooding, due to some structural collapses, and also five tornadoes reported with Alex. Two of those very close to us here in Brownsville. Brief tornado touchdowns with some minor damage, but no injuries. Brownsville coming through this in pretty good shape. South Padre Island also coming through this in very good shape. Stephanie was there through the duration, and Stephanie, I think a lot of people breathing big sighs of relief this morning. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest problem we have is all this seaweed. It's just mounds of it are littering the beach as far as I can see. And that's really it. No damage to report. The power is on. All the water has receded. But we still still have some choppy surf. As you can see it behind me, the waves, well, they're anywhere from around 14 feet just north of where, located, where we're located to 9 feet off Galveston where there is a rip current. So that's something that you need to be concerned about. It's calm now, but of course, that was not the case yesterday. And if if you had to walk away from your TV, maybe you had to go work, here's a look at what went down. This is what Hurricane Alex looked like and sounded like as a Category 2 storm roared across the southern Mexican and Texas coast. The winds continue, the rains continue, some of the heaviest that we've seen. It made landfall with maximum sustained winds of 105 miles per hour. Alex dumped in some areas an estimated 10 inches of rain, turning roads into rivers. So I have to leave my car over there and go all the way to my house. We got to buy some groceries, so we're doing a lot of stuff. Alex also sent thousands into nearby evacuation shelters, forcing them from their homes due to the storm's intensity. We urge anybody that needs to evacuate there are, that there are in low-lying areas to, to come over to, to the shelters. We're just going to hope that we can make it through the night. To compound Alex's wrath, there were at least five reported tornadoes that touched down along the Texas coast. Fortunately, only minor damage was reported. Kind of touched down right there on the chicken coop, and, and, and it picked up water, and I yelled at my husband. I said, we're getting hit by the tornado, and he said, ah, oh, you crazy woman. And although Texas was spared a direct hit, Alex's impact will last for days. And what's interesting, Mike, is a piece of Alex could actually break off and end up in the Southern Plains. But, you know, the weather's connected all around the world. So who knows if Alex was part of a snowstorm from two years ago, you know? Yeah, it's also fluid, Stephanie. It's just interesting to watch. If you ever look at a big global satellite, how everything moves together so fluidly. Uh, Steph, thanks. And here in Brownsville, I think a, a similar fate to what we had there in South Padre. Uh, roadways are now dry. We haven't had rain in roughly two hours here. And as you look on the radar, uh, we're going to see a lot less rain, especially along the coast here uh, through the morning. Some of the heavier stuff has worked its way, obviously, through Mexico, around that center of circulation, and through portions of interior Texas, where flooding could still be an issue for us. Winds will be dying off to today uh, quite significantly in Brownsville, uh, Galveston, as you work your way toward the South Padre. They've generally been uh, 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts that have been higher than that. Uh, tornado threat, a little bit lower for us today. And now that uh, Alex has made landfall 110 miles south of where we were, we were in a... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. We were in a right front quadrant yesterday, which was the worst area to have for tornadoes. Five brief touchdowns. Dr. Forbes joins us this morning with that tornado threat. And I think it's obviously that and the flooding. Still concerns, Dr. Forbes, but maybe not nearly as bad 
as yesterday. No, but with some heating this afternoon, Mike, there's still enough shear in the atmosphere that we can get a couple of tornadoes. Here's the severe outlook for today. South Texas still a threat of an isolated tornado. Also up in Montana, they hit a tornado yesterday. Could be some severe weather in North Dakota as well. Torcon values for South Texas. I've given a four down near Brownsville. That's where the strongest winds are aloft. Up uh, coastal Texas, uh, closer to Galveston and Port Lavaca, I've given a three. Up in Montana, I've given a four. A little bit higher chance up in there. Let's go to other source. Part of the problem is going to be flooding in Mexico. Pushing to the mountains.